thanks for the introduction. My name is Alexander Krogel. I'm the PhD candidate of Professor Saichu. And thanks for the presentation before. Really nice information. And my presentation is very similar with the same topic because we are talking about the energy management system in a hybrid power system. And in my PhD, I have uh, the island of Barbados as an example. And I want to uh, start with the reasons why is it important to increase the re renewable energies on that island. And after that, I want to give you some background information and the challenges why it is important to maintain the grid st stability. And after that, I came to the controller structure of the different power plants I want to use and the structure of this, the energy management system. At the end of my presentation, I have a simulation result that shows you how the management system will work. So first of all, why is it important to increase the renewable energies on that island? Today, we have 100% access to the electricity, but that remains over 90% dependent of important fossil fuels for the electricity generation and the transportation sector. That isn't very well. We want to change that. And today, there are only 30 megawatt renewable energies like PV on that island. And if we can change and increase the renewable energies, we will save at least costs. And we will prevent that the deleted generators there will uh, have a lot of carbon emissions. So let's start with the background information about that island. So we have a really nice average daily solar insulation of around about 5.7 kilowatt hours per square meter. If you compare that with Europe, you will only have the half. So it would be great to install a lot of them. But you know, first of all, you have the Uriens peaks during April to August. But you have cloudy to partly cloudy skies during August to December. So you see there are some seasonalities. So if you want to reach up the 100% renewable scenario, you have to install from 200 to 270 megawatt on that island. So let's get over to the wind resources. And the wind speeds range there from 4.8 to 8.0 mega uh, meter per second at a hub height of 10 meters. And we have lowest wind speeds between August and September. And there you see the problem. If you think about the solar I talked before, we have problems from August to the sem September. So um, the potential we can install in that island is around about 40, 70 megawatts. And you see that we have the problem with the renewable energies like wind and solar from August to September. So we have to install a pump storage power plant to save a lot of energy collected the month before to get sure that we have a lot of energy for the other month, especially for August to September. So it's possible on that island to build a pump storage power plant with the installation capacity of 190 to 300 megawatts, with the storage capacity from one to eight, uh, from one to five gigawatt hours, we have an area with an altitude drop from around about 250 meters on that island. So you can see the picture of that island where we have different locations where we can install the wind turbines all over the island distributed so that we may not come into trouble if the wind speed changes in the north so that all of our wind turbines changes that power input. And we have here three points where the diesel generators are actually installed on that island. And in some we have around about 250 megawatt installed capacity for diesel generators. And the peak load of that island is round about by 160 megawatts, so you compare it with the numbers I told before. 
So I can conclude that we have um, four different generating plants on that island we want to build up. First of all, the photovoltaic, the wind turbines, and to have a storage system, we want to use the pump storage power plant I told before. And the diesel generators, we don't want to put it out of the system because if your pump storage power plant will out of water, you will have a problem if your photovoltaic and wind turbines doesn't run. So we will use the old generators as a backup system to prevent that we maintain the grid stability in this, that, on that island. So uh, Thomas Ackermann has told before that there could be some problems in the grid stability in the case of where we want to pump up water. So if the PV load, uh, PV, PV power and the PV P wind will greater than the load, you have to change the you have to change the controller in your PV and your your wind turbines because um, if they only work in the grid following mode, you can get into trouble because nobody takes care then about the frequency and the voltage in the grid. So we have to switch to the grid forming mode on these inverters. So I want to give you the, the topic layer of the, the regulator written in MATLAB code. And you see three different, I'm a, the, the grid following mode, the grid forming mode, and the synchronization for the inverters. And uh, on the topic layer, it looks very, very similar between um, the PQ and the VOF mode. But um, I will show you the, the difference in this in the next slides. So let's start with the grid following mode. Um, to prevent that my MATLAB model um, feeds in more power available from the wind or PV, I have to calculate uh, how much power is available. So uh, this is the, the first one I marked here. And I use a droop characteristic to, to react fast um, to, to the frequency drops and voltage drops in the, in the grid. And I have a secondary control and a correction from my energy management system so that I can influence the feed-in power of this system. Um, the, the other mode looks very similar. Um, we have already the determination of maximum possible power, but in the droop characteristic, now we changed from in the, in the control mode before that there was the input F and the output P, and now we have a input P and the output F. So we are in the grid forming mode, and the converter or the inverter and takes care about the frequency and the voltage in the grid. And we have already the secondary control for the feed-in power and the correction by the EMS. So take a little closer look to the management system I want to create. Um, we have here the management system and it collects a lot of information like the frequency in the grid and the voltage in the grid and important other information like the level of the reservoir and the pump storage power plant because if you're running out of water, you have to start some diesel generators to um, maintain the grid stability. So the management system will send to each of these models the, re the reference values for the active and reactive power and these models put in the power in the grid and you will get some feedback over the frequency and over the frequency so that you have here the controller. The management system will take care about that. So let me tell you how the management system works. So in case where you want to increase the feed-in power because your frequency is lower than the nominal frequency, you want to increase first of all the photovoltaic system and the feed and power of the wind turbines because you want to use them most over the time and if they cannot feed in more power 
because the sun is not shining or the wind is not blowing, you have to increase the feed and power of the pump surge power plant working in turbine mode. And if your management system will, will know that your reservoir is out of water or, uh, or the, uh, the installation capacity of that pump surge power plant isn't enough, the management system will turn on the diesel generators as a backup system. So in case of that there is a lot of energy in the, in the grid, we, we have to decrease the feed and power. So first of all, we want to decrease the feed and power of the diesel generators because we only want to use them if we have to use them. And in the second step, we decreased the, the feed and power of the pump storage power plant working in turbine mode, so we save a lot of water because we want to use them in, in other time periods where we have to use them. If then there is always the frequency higher than the nominal frequency, we can increase the pumping power of the pump storage power plant to um, raise the level in the river reservoir. And if then the frequency is always greater than the nominal frequency, we have to decrease the feed and power of the photovoltaics and the wind turbines which are working in the grid forming mode. So let me get you some inside view of the models I wrote in MATLAB code. First of all, the pump storage power plant, you see the synchronous generator and um, a subsystem for the mechanical power. And we have here the regulation for the excited voltage of the synchronous generator. And here we have the inputs from the management system to uh, feed in the active and re reactive power by the synchronous generator. So I have a model for uh, inverter. And you can see here we have a switch where we can choose between the different modes we want to use. So the, the synchronization or the grid forming or the grid following mode. And that goes into the current control which outputs the, the voltage the inverter have to, to have uh, for the feed and power. Yes. So at least uh, I have the diesel generators and it's very similar to the pump storage power plant I showed you before. We have here the synchronous generator and a model for the mechanical uh, driven power and the model for the excited voltage as well. And we have here two inputs for the, from the, the energy management system to influence the feed and power of the diesel generators. So at the end of my presentation I have a picture where we have around about one, 150 megawatts loads. And you can see that we have, at the beginning of the simulation, a lot of wind speed, so that our wind turbines feed in a lot of power. And the management system decreases, no, no, it decreases, the wind speed decreases, and the management system increases the power of the diesel generators. And when the day is starting, um, the PV um, load goes up and because of the weather condition the, the wind speed goes down so that the, the management system has to decrease the input, the feed in power of the diesel generators. So I want to conclude uh, now my presentation and um, Barbados is actually 90% dependent on the fossil fuel imports. This is connected to high costs for the electricity and the trans transportation sector. So we can use different power plants to increase the independence of that imports and can save some costs on these hands. So, yeah. But we have to to take care about the frequencies, so we have to 
to write an algorithm to switch between the, the grid forming and grid following modes. And at the end of the day, we can save some CO2 emissions by using this renewable energies instead of the use of these uh, diesel generators. And on that island, the government of Barbados has committed to a 100 renew percent renewable energy system by 2030. So we have to do it, and we can do it. Thanks. <laughs>